What do you do when your spouse or partner is not on board with your homesteading dreams? This is something I hear people struggling with all the time. One spouse is all into the idea of homesteading and the other has big reservations or is very against the idea. Recently, I coached a member of the Homesteading for Beginners community through this very topic. I decided a podcast episode on this topic would be good for those dealing with the same thing. So my husband, um, Joe, and I have been homesteading for most of our marriage. We celebrated our 31 years of marriage this past year, this year, and 20 of those years we were homesteaders. My husband did live a homesteading lifestyle way before it was called that because his parents always raised animals and had a garden. They were much older than him, so this was kind of their retired life to raise their little boy in this farm type homesteading lifestyle. But I don't think he was, my husband was really super eager to get back into the lifestyle as much as I was when we first met. It wasn't until our, our we had our kids that we really started wanting our kids to have the life, the childhood he had and the childhood I dreamed of. He has fond memories of the animals that they had, the two and a half acres of land his parents owned, and the bike riding he did across those two and a half acres and more because they were really in a rural area at the time. So he loved to explore and he has really fond memories of all that. Over the years, we have not agreed on all a lot of things, <laughs> but somehow we got good at working it out. And you have to after being married for as long as we have. A lot of times, one spouse tends to be more reserved than the other. Joe is definitely more reserved when it comes to adding things like the animals and the homestead stuff than I am. And after 31 years of marriage, I've learned to be more reserved as well. And he's learned to be more open to things. And this has also enabled me to see his side more clearly and without judgment. I didn't poll any of my audience But I imagine some of the objections from this, the spouses that is the spouse that is not on, that is not into the idea of homesteading might be concerned with these things. Let me list them. So I have six. Um, They might be concerned with the cost of starting a homestead. Um, They might be giving up modern conveniences might be a concern. Fitting in as a homesteader might be a concern. Their kids will be deprived and sheltered. Um, Family and friends will judge their lifestyle. Um, Added work to their already busy life. So those are the six things that I kind of came up with as I was thinking through this that might be some objections to homesteading. And if any of these objections resonate with you, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So you can send me a direct message on Instagram at at farmer underscore Mona. Um, And if I didn't list an objection your spouse or you might have, please tell me that too. I'd love to hear it. And hopefully help both spouses or partners see both sides of the coin and offer some ideas on how to move forward. I'll start by saying, though, if this topic is very hot, a hot topic in your home and it creates a lot of tension, Um, and you are ready to end your relationship because of it, because you can't agree on it, uh, please go get counseling, uh, you know, get more deeper with your counselor, uh, you know, that you can have with both you and your spouse. Okay, so objection one is the cost of homesteading may be a concern for one of the spouses. So um, especially if you have to if you have to make drastic changes to your lifestyle. If you're going from a two income family to a single income family, there are some sacrifices you both need to be willing to make. So um, there are home, there are also like homesteading uh, ongoing expenses that you need to factor in as well. So if your spouse is concerned with these things, don't shrug it off, validate their concerns and get a plan together. And do your research and find out how much it will really cost to do the things that you're dreaming of. Um, things don't just magically come together and your spouse, your spouse feels that 
and need some reassurance, you have done your research and have started the planning process, but you also include them in it. I think one of the things that tends to happen is the one spouse that is super into things, like this would happen to me where I was super into things, I wouldn't bring my husband, I wouldn't bring Joe along in my thought process and how it was changing and it was changing pretty quick, you know, it might change pretty quickly because I'm learning really fast about what what I want, but I'm not taking my spouse along. A way to do that might be to, uh, you know, offer some uh a podcast for them to listen to on their drive to work or you know of course you can have my podcast but there's many um, homesteading podcasts out there that are very useful and they'll get um, them up to speed with what it is that you you're dreaming of for your uh, life and your family objection two was giving up modern conveniences homesteading can literally be whatever you want it to be I think many people envision homesteaders living a very rural and very rural settings, um, but that's not how many people are doing their homesteading. That's not how many people are in uh, closer areas to the city like me uh, and our homestead now. And we really weren't that super far from our our, our the the uh, the small city um, in our in our old homestead in California, um, but a. Uh, the reason a lot of people go out to very rural areas is that it's more affordable. So if your spouse wants to be close to like a grocery store and a movie theaters and hospitals, then that's a perfectly reasonable desire. Homesteading is a lifestyle. We don't have to live out in the boonies unless that is our desire. And I think it should be a desire for both parties, not just one or at least the spouse that is giving up their wishes knows what they're giving up and why they're doing it. If it's, you know, we often do things for our family um, because we know it's better for them. So if that's the reason why, that's your why, um, just know that that is it. And so that when it, times get hard, you have the reason, <laughs> that reason to uh, help you continue on your journey. The other types of modern conveniences like dishwashers and laundry dryers and instapots those types of things are totally preference and if if anyone makes you feel like you're not a homesteader for having those things then well you know what send them to me because I will have to have a talk with them because uh, we don't have to live without modern conveniences objection three is fitting in as a homesteader I have I have heard people say I don't feel welcomed as a homesteader because I don't look like them do the same things as they do or believe what they believe. And that actually blows my mind, honestly, because I've never seen homesteaders as a one type of person. Maybe it's because I'm used to being different. I have generally never fit in a norm and my parents always taught me to embrace my uniqueness and my passions. So remember, homesteading is a lifestyle most of us are choosing this lifestyle based on how we want to live our lives and raise the next generation. So saying a homesteader looks like, you know, fill in the blank is like saying pilots should look like Tom Cruise, you know, Top Gun Maverick character, you know, <laughs> like all pilots must have a green jacket and all the patches on it and, and on their off time ride motorcycles, like all pilots out there are not doing doing the piloting thing and they're just faking it if they don't look like Tom Cruise or the Maverick character. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a pilot so I that's, that's as far as I can go, but that sounds absurd, I know, but I think you get what I mean. There is no look to homesteading. Homesteading is about building a set of skills to help you be more self-sufficient and sustainable for the health of and well-being of you, your family, and your community. So if you are the spouse with reservations about homesteading because you feel you don't fit the mold, break free from that thought process. That is not serving you and homestead the way that you want to. The objection number four, which is your spouse may be um, worried that their that your kids will be deprived 
and sheltered in this lifestyle. So one, my, one spouse may be thinking, yay, my kids will be wild and free living the homesteading life, while the other may be thinking the kids will have less opportunities to be with other kids because you live out in the country, which also means more kind of isolation in some, some cases. And the fear of the kids being too sheltered may be the objection. Uh, you know, it's a legitimate thing. It's a legitimate objection if you think your kids are going to be too sheltered. So many homesteading families today are starting their journey with young kids. But one day that child will also be a preteen and a teenager. And their desire to be with their peers is going to be even stronger. So just keep that in mind um, as you're making these decisions. And if that's an objection your your significant other has, be aware that that's a that's legitimate and just take it from that point of view. Homeschooling is often the choice of parents in this lifestyle as well. We homeschooled our kids. In fact, I'm in my 25th and last year of homeschooling and I feel like I deserve an award or something. (laughs) I've been in it for the long haul. Uh, While homeschooling is not the choice of many homesteaders these days, there's still concerns about choosing to homestead in a rural f- rural family type uh, farm type setting. And then also like that also maybe I like, include an isolation for the kids. So oftentimes homesteading is associated with out in the country and living away from things and also the lifestyle kind of a lot of homesteaders will choose not to do certain things because you have different um, desires for your kids to learn, which is completely fine. So being away from peers and things is, uh, you know, especially true for homeschoolers because they have their peers or their their, uh, siblings a lot of times. So that can really affect um, kids, uh, you know, in good ways and in bad ways. So I'm not going to put all negative on that at all. Um, But the word sheltered shouldn't really be viewed completely as a negative thing because age appropriate sheltering is important in my opinion. Young kids don't need to have like the weight of adult problems. And as parents, we are able to be involved to the point in our kid in our child's lives that we can see when they're ready for certain things. So we can also become in tune with when they need more interaction and less less interaction with peers. I've been homeschooling so long that the most common negative response to our homeschooling decision was what about social socialization? It was like the you know, it was like the most common Uh, objection to my our decision and I feel like we finally maybe have gotten past that and it's not as big of a thing anymore Um, especially after 2020 uh, when a lot of kids had to go home but socialization is a concern for a lot of homeschooling parents my response to this question it was something like this one of the reasons I chose to homeschool is that so that I could have time to become in tune with my children enough to be able to recognize what their needs are. That means sometimes I made sure my kids had experiences that allowed them to grow in character and social skills. And sometimes they needed more and sometimes they needed less. I have some kids that are more social (laughs) than maybe the average, you know. So, and each child is individual. And just to be clear, also, I'm not saying parents of children in public and private schools can't be in tune with their children. This was just our, uh, this was our choice. This This was the choice we made. So my whole point here is that it doesn't matter if your kids live in the city, next to the best social sport, social events and things and sports activities, or if they live out in the middle of nowhere as wild children, it's up to us parents to recognize our children's needs and create opportunities for them that will look different for every single family. 
So this is an opportunity for you to reassure that uh, your spouse that you are aware of the possible need for them to be more socialized and have more activities and not be so isolated and uh, not be, you know, have the appropriate <laughs> age appropriate sheltering in place. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to reassure your spouse that this is an area that you will take care of and with their help. So it doesn't have to be on anyone's parent's shoulders and it shouldn't be. But um, as you, you coming from the place of wanting to be the one homesteading, just be sure that you reassure them that this is something that you will take on as a thing to take care of your child's needs, you know. So the next is objection five, which is family and friends will judge their lifestyle. Um, this one's going to be short because while I understand this concern, um, if you are the spouse or if you're not the spouse that deals with this, listen to what I have to say and maybe you can encourage but if you are the spouse that is worried about this, hear my words. We can't live by the expectations of others. Other people can't live our lives for us. So make the most of the life you have and don't worry about what other people think. <laughs> um, it took me years to get to the point where I stopped trying to people please. And it's no way to live. And the sooner you are free of that, the better. So that's my, that's my thing. And I'm not saying don't care about what people think either. I'm saying don't let their thoughts dictate your life. Pursue your passions, pursue your dreams, and just, you know, let them live their life and you can live yours. So that, that's all I have to say about that. But, and then there is objection six, which is added work to their already busy life. This is a real big one, I think. Um, I think a lot of people, like one spouse is like, you know, I'm all in. I don't think it's a big deal. We can just add this. And the other one's like, wait a minute, you're going to put all that on my plate. So chances are, if you're like most people in the world today, you're not just sitting around all day doing nothing. <laughs> if you are a parent, you're likely really busy with kids and possibly you have a job and the thought of adding more responsibilities just scares you. Or maybe you think you can handle it, but your spouse is thinking that's just more work for them. I know there were times my husband thought this when I would say things, but it wasn't like I was, I, I felt genuinely like I would take on the responsibility, but really I had less time for the family or less time for, you know, cooking and cleaning. So that responsibility ended up being, you know, more on his plate. So the more I took on for the farm, the less I had time for in other areas. If you're the one who's thinking it's no big deal, I, I have an exercise for you. So I really want you to audit your time. I want you to take inventory of the time you have right now. And then I want you to estimate how long you think the new responsibilities will take and then double that because things usually take way longer than we think they will. And once you see your doubled number, then you can see how much you can realistically add to your plate. Um, then share this with your spouse with the objections, you know, the, the spouse that has the objections, share this and maybe have them do the same exercise. But really, you know, evaluate how much time you have and how much time you're willing to put into a project and then double it because I have had so many times it's not like every day is going to take twice as long but there are days that are going to take twice and sometimes more more long than you expected because as I mentioned in episodes before animals are unpredictable they do things that we don't expect and it just takes longer with a garden, it may not be um, that way unless you just are going crazy with the amount of food that you're trying to grow. If you're going crazy with the amount of food you're trying to grow, harvest time is going to be rough. So really evaluate the time that you have, the time that you're willing to spend. And if you don't have enough time, you have to have someone help you. So 
make sure that you um, have a plan and offer that to the spouse with the objections. It would be best though if you just got really good at your chores list the smaller chores list or the the chores list and the responsibilities that you're able to have and then add the new ones don't do it don't you know have more forethought on this do it in a way that is a process where your skills become better and faster and then you add more responsibilities and then you know also be willing to let go of things if things don't turn out the way you hoped it would and you're just going crazy because you don't want your homesteading journey to be one where you feel like you're more busy than you ever were and you're really not able to enjoy the life that you have so that's all i have for today i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions or have other objections you'd like to share you can uh, send me a message on instagram or you can email me at mona at healthyhomesteading.com <laughs>